Hello, welcome to my talk on what is the Reynolds number. This seems not a real question, since we have used Reynolds number everywhere in the viscous flows, and we all know where, when Reynolds number is large, the corresponding flows would be turbulent. As we have seen in the most practical flows, but what is the physical meaning of Reynolds number, and how the Reynolds number was proposed? In this talk, I will answer these questions. Osborn Reynolds carried out the systematic experiment studies on the flow transitions from lamina to turbulent in the circular pipes in the period of March to April 1880, based on the reference, which was published in 1883. The experiment is used for. Examine some important issue, such as in what situation the fluid resistance in a tube was proportional to the square of the velocity, or when it is proportional to the velocity. Did the steady flow, that is the nominal flow, hold up to a critical value, and then it is coming in? For instance, the eddies can be in at a certain value of the expression given here. Rho is the density of the fluid. T is the radius of the pipe. Capital U is the average velocity of the flow in the pipe. Mu is the viscosity coefficient of the fluid. The experiment was carried out on three pipes of different size at different temperature and different velocities. Reynolds studied the different combinations of the parameters and found that his p number is a good non-dimensional number for indicating the flow state, defined as this. Here, d is the pipe diameter. Capital U is the mean velocity of the flow in the pipe. No is the fluid density. Mu is the fluid viscosity. In 1895, Reynolds published the result of the non-dimensional K number. This number is formally named as Reynolds number. So the Reynolds result would be, if the K number is less than 1900, the flow would be laminar, and when the K number is larger than 2000, the flow would be turbulent. And between 1900 and 2000, the flow would be in the transition from laminar to turbulent. Today. The well-accepted kinetic Reynolds number for pipe flow would be 2,300, and the turbulent flow would be when the Reynolds number is larger than 4,000. And again, between 2,300 and 4,000, the flow is in the transition from laminar to turbulent. Now here, I would like to give you an example. To see what is the corresponding flow velocity to achieve the critical Reynolds number, suppose a pipe of a diameter of d equaling to 0.1 meter. This is a mid-sized of pipe. The fluid is water. Here we want to calculate the velocity of the water to achieve the critical Reynolds number, 2,300. Based on the definition of the Reynolds number, we can calculate the mean velocity of the flow in the pipe given by this formula. Use the water viscosity and the critical Reynolds number density here and the diameter. So we 
of 10, the kinetic velocity would be 0.023 meters per second. This is mere 23 millimeter per second. It is a very slow flow, and uh, the velocities for most kinetic flow would be much larger than this kinetic velocity. Therefore, this is why most of the flows we see are turbulent flows. To understand the meaning of Fourier number, it is important if we examine the fluid forces, and then we will see how the fluid forces and the Reynolds number are linked. Here we take the pipe flow as an example, but we should be noted that the the principles used here are applicable to all problems. In the analysis, we can assume, regardless of the force types, the fluid force. Here, we consider the fluid inertia force and the fluid viscous force could be determined by the following parameters. Fluid velocity. A larger fluid velocity will cause a larger fluid force for both inertia force and fluid viscous force. But in what format? Fluid viscosity mu. Obviously, a larger fluid viscosity would cause a larger fluid friction, and it is generally proportional to the fluid viscosity. Fluid density is also an important parameter for the fluid forces. But how the contribution would be, we will look at this later on. The paper diameter. For a large pipe, the fluid forces would be larger. And again, how the contribution would be for the pipe diameter. To construct the relevant forces, we choose the constructing parameters based on the requirements from the base unit. The expression construction would be very similar to the analysis in the Buckingham pi theory. So we see for the base unit length, we can employ the pipe diameter to meet the requirement the length and the unit meter. For the mass, we choose the fluid density, rho, but we can obtain the mass by the manipulation rho times d cubic, which would have a unit kg. And for the time second, we can choose velocity v and we can obtain the unit second use d divided by v. Now we are using the simple dimensional analysis to construct the inertia force. Generally, the inertia force would be proportional to the fluid density, and this should be understandable. We can imagine. The inertia force of water would be much larger than that of the air of the same velocity and size. Thus, we can construct the inertia force using the chosen parameters. So we have the approximation for the inertia force Fi given by the expression as this. Here, the power indices A, B, and C can be determined using the dimensional analysis. So if we match both sides of the expression to the force unit given by m l t power of minus 2, we can see this expression. And uh, we could have the expression to match the force unit as this. So we can solve this power indices A equaling to 1, B equaling to 2, and C equaling to 2. 
Thus, we can have the approximation expression for the inertia force Fi given by this. This relation can be understood if the fluid density is doubled while keep other parameters unchanged, the inertia force would be roughly doubled. If either the velocity or the diameter is doubled while keep other parameters unchanged, the inertia force would be roughly quadrupled. For the fluid with cost force F mu, an obvious assumption would be the fluid viscosity force would be proportional to the fluid viscosity mu, and this should be understood as the fluid with a larger viscosity would present a larger viscosity force. So, the viscosity force could be constructed as proportional to the viscosity and the other chosen parameters given in a form as this, and the power indices D, E, F can be determined using the dimensional analysis. So use the dimensional analysis to match both sides of the expression to the force unit, and we have the expression as this. Solve this equation, we get the power indices D equaling to 0, E equaling to 1, and F equaling to 1. Thus, the fluid with cost force would be given as this. This relation can be understood. The fluid with cost force would be proportional to the fluid viscosity coefficient. If the velocity or the diameter is doubled while keep other parameters unchanged, the fluid viscous force would be roughly doubled. In here, we calculate the ratio of the fluid inertia force over the viscous force given as this, and uh, we can see the ratio it's actually the Nanot number since we defined the Nanot number for the flow in the pipe given by this. This means the Nanot number is an indicator of the ratio of the fluid inertia force over the viscous force. So this means in a flow of a large Nanot number, relatively the fluid inertia force would be much larger than the fluid viscous force, such as in the turbulent flows. While in a flow of a very low Nanot number, relatively, the viscous force would be same as, or even more important than the fluid inertia force, such as the laminar flow in the pipe, as shown by Nanot in his experiment when the flow is very slow.